Welcome back to another installment of Julian's Random Projects. Uh, today's video, another update on the EV conversion of an MG Midget. And the milestone is uh, receiving a bunch of parts in and also removing the uh, internal combustion motor. It's a, it's a bit like Christmas here in the garage. A lot of uh, new stuff showing up, a lot of the core components, the pieces that would be required for making measurements and actually bolting stuff together. No easier way to determine where your you know new motor mount should go than to actually put the motor in there and uh, take some measurements. So this is the inverter that I bought from EVTV. Uh, if you've been thinking about getting into converting an electric car, now is definitely the time to do it. Some of these parts have never been cheaper, uh, both from like an industrial uh, standpoint from companies that maybe paid 10 grand for some of these things uh, to the second hand, but I mean, not second hand in the, in the sense that things are used, but like a downstream market where parts, you know, it's an overage in stock or a company went out of business. And there's a lot of reasons why uh, some of these parts are being picked up for pennies on the dollar and then made available to uh, end users. Uh, case in point, uh, this inverter is was originally going for about five grand. God only knows what it cost um, to to produce. Uh, but the folks over at uh, EBTV had this on their website for like forty nine ninety five something like that. I don't know what to call it five grand. And I love the way that these guys are doing business. They they have a number of the air cooled that weren't moving and so they dropped the price and my guess is just to see if there's any interest at that price right and it's the true indication of what something cost is how quickly you can sell it when i sell some of these used cars uh, that i fiddle with on craigslist if i don't sell it within a week typically in, in, in the bay area in california here where the the craigslist market is very hot there's a lot of eyeballs there, there's a lot of activity if i don't sell it in that first week i've priced it wrong i'm confident that I priced it wrong. And, you know, can I wait around for months and months and, and get a little bit more money? Maybe, but then there's the, the, the cost of storage and the cost of my time. And so you don't actually, you know, gain anything from that. So you, you drop it to what it is. And what something is worth is, 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 is determined by the free market and what somebody else is willing to pay for it. And so these guys get it over there. So they drop this thing down and I saw it drop down. I've been looking at parts for, you know, uh, on and off for the last two years to, to do a conversion. And I, there's, no promise that it would stay that low so i just i jumped on it and then if you guys if you see this video i'll put a link in the description if it's still as affordable as it was when i got it grab these parts uh they're definitely worth it so uh this is the inverter that i'm going to be using and then here's a uh, a quick unboxing of the the electric motor i'll take out the tripod here it's not very big i mean here's here's my hand compared to it right like it's not it's not very big at all if you want uh, for scale, here's an Arduino versus Evil ruler for scale. Sorry, I didn't have any bananas. Uh, it is water cooled, so water comes. You know, there's an inlet and outlet for water, and then it's got the uh, three connectors here uh, for all the different phases of an AC motor. It's an AC motor. It's got bolting, you know, mounting locations to tie it into the the, the vehicle. It came with uh, some of these tie straps or like a uh, eye holes might remove those and use the as a mounting location but it'd be really nice to be able to drop this thing down into uh, into the vehicle there it is beside the uh, transmission from the MG and so now it's just a matter of doing what every EV conversion has done before me and that is to connect this shaft with that shaft and that outer bell housing with uh, the face of this motor. Uh, it's just a matter of finding the right person with the right skills to do it. Um, given enough time and maybe uh, a few more tools here in the garage, I could probably uh, finger it out. But um, I'm really interested in getting this thing converted and getting onto the stuff that I'm good at, like doing some of the wiring and, and that type of stuff. So there they are. Let's come around here and take a look at the uh, the very oily, messy <laughs> motor that it's replacing. Uh, it's this guy. Again, for scale, let me grab that ruler. There's that ruler. Um, now, it's you know, similar in length, or, or depth, I guess, uh, but I mean, look at the height of it. I mean, it's just, the other motor's probably gonna end about here from the ground up. You got all that extra space. So, it it's uh, it'll mount up inside of the MG, 
in relationship to that shaft, right? So if you kind of visualize this guy, where the shaft is there on the bottom, I'm trying to swing around without making you throw up. As it sits in here, it's gonna sit quite low. It's got to, it's got to line up with that shaft. All right, so like I was saying, it's got to line up down here. I threw a light down there. It's got to line up with that shaft there for uh, the the back side of the transmission. So it's gonna come out, and I mean, realistically, it's gonna be about here. If you see that, it's pretty low down in there. So I think I'll have plenty of room uh, for this big, tall, air-cooled guy. Now, we earlier we were talking about the price of this thing. It is um, presumably as affordable as it is because it's rocking about an extra four inches of, uh, of height compared to its water-cooled brother. Uh, but again, I'd, I'd rather deal with uh, four inches of extra material, have to spend another four grand on an inverter. I mean, it's definitely worth the trade-off. And uh, because we're not going for crazy performance with the, uh, with the midget here, like there's a good chance that in its current configuration, uh, given a stock drivetrain as well as transmission and uh, back axle and these these um, knock knock off not knock off as in fake but knock off as in uh, you put a wrench on here and you knock them off uh, uh, the splines in here are very very shallow and they've been known to strip out especially if they get a little bit rusty or you put too much torque hello electric motor you put too much torque on these things and they'll just spin right out of there and then you just have um, wheels with no uh, with no traction so i'm um, definitely if if we went full hog on this paired with the electric motor uh, we are going to be breaking all sorts of other pieces downstream in the drivetrain so i'm going to take it really easy i'll do my best to detune this in software uh, whether it's with the uh, the include the controller um like the actual like microcontroller that controls stuff or in the firmware for this guy itself i don't know yet we'll we'll find out we'll learn more later um, but uh, in detuning it, I'm not likely to need all of this heat dissipation. So I might be able to get away with, you know, cutting an inch off the top or, um, you know, cu cutting a curved beveled edge to this to make it uh, fit underneath the bonnet. So uh, time will tell what we'd end up doing with this beautiful um, example of a, uh, of a highly, highly engineered uh, inverter. Very pleased with that. All right, well, thanks for joining me. I hope you guys have enjoyed these smaller videos. Uh, my plan is to um, catalog this for people that are interested in like the, the minutia, the, the ins and outs of these things, uh, you know, the, the types of components I've chosen and why and um, what batteries I'm using and where I got them from and that type of stuff. And then I'll, I'll likely make a very, you know, maybe a more sensational video at the end cataloging from uh, discovering this thing in a garage to uh, you know, back on the road again under electric power. Um, if you've got any any opinions about whether or not I should leave the original paint and all of its defects, uh, leave it down in the comments. Let me know. I'm leaning towards leaving it that way. It's kind of it's got some character. I mean, this this rub mark here is definitely from folks <laughs> leaning in on it and uh, uh, working on this engine and stuff. So a bit of sun damage, but also a bit of uh, rough and tumble life that it's that it lived and uh, some of the damage that it sustained from being in a garage for a couple decades and uh, to be clear this is a strict conversion I'm, I'm converting it to electric I'm not explicitly restoring it to be like concourse quality stuff it's uh, this is just a conversion to get it back on the road and uh, maybe have a little bit of fun with the extra torque all right so stay tuned and uh, see how we get on with the electric MG Midget. I'm hanging in, there ain't no doubt, and I'm hanging tough over and out, over and out.